So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we're going to look at what are the platforms we use for imaging the Earth's surface. So in this video, we want to look at the platforms that are uh, routinely used for uh, gathering the remote sensing imagery. So over the past 40 years, the most common platform has uh, been the Earth orbiting satellites. And also the aircraft uh, platforms are often used. And uh, more recently, the imaging from drones has become a popular. So uh, in this video, uh, we will say a little about each uh, platform types uh, concentrating uh, on satellites since their orbital characteristics are quite uh, specific to the need for operationally uh, monitoring the globe. And uh, there are several different uh, differences among the spacecraft, aircraft uh, and drones for imaging. The most obvious through uh, is that the further one is uh, from the earth the greater the area that can be imaged so whereas uh, based on uh, above one experience a higher spatial resolution could seems to be possible with the platform uh, closer to the earth's surface that immediately sets the satellites apart from uh, other two the reservoir aircraft and drone so uh, by using a uh, spacecraft platforms uh, it is uh, technically feasible to uh, image the whole of the Earth's surface in a particular time frame. And uh, aircraft and uh, drone missions, uh, by comparison, are not a global images, but tends to be focused on uh, a mission-specific area of interest. And we will now look at uh, each of the three platforms in little more details. Uh, so each of the platform has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. So we have three different platforms, that is satellite, aircraft and drone platforms. So the satellite can co cover an entire globe compared to aircraft and drone. It has cover it covers only a specific uh, region of interest. And imaging sensors in the imaging sensors can in the principle be carried out on any platform above the Earth's surface. So clearly, the higher the platform, uh, the greater the area of uh, Earth's surface that can be imaged. While the platform that is closer to the Earth's uh, make a higher resolution imaging sensor. So as uh, listed here, the satellite will allow uh, the whole Earth uh, globe to be imaged within a reasonable uh, time frame. And also importantly, they operate above the Earth's uh, atmosphere, while uh, that means an imaging must be, so the imaging must be carried out through the atmospheric column. So the benefits from uh, not having uh, to travel through the atmosphere, it means that uh, the platform is uh, quite stable. The atmosphere can often be uh, turbulent, meaning that the platform that travel through, it can have uh, a variations in their altitude and uh, latitudes. And that is a point in causing uh, variations in the geometry of the recorded images. Nevertheless, the imaging uh, through the atmospheric uh, column will uh, introduce a brightness and contrast errors into the recorded image data, which often uh, requires a correction before the image is uh, usable and because the satellite programs are so expensive to uh, develop and build and launch the data uh, tends to be made available to uh, too many thousands of uh, users and thus and uh, tends to be regarded as a common uh, good product notwithstanding the fact uh, that some countries are restrict the access to the images recorded by their uh, national programs and this is same for as true for the commercial satellite operators. The user's uh, base is very large. Even through the products are sold at a commercial uh, rights. Uh, two final points uh, should be noted. Because the satellites are placed in uh, an orbit and thus are not easily revisited. So the sensors and their property are specified in the satellite uh, design. And uh, in general, they cannot be changed once a satellite is in orbit. And uh, there is a move towards a cluster of uh, micro satellites, uh, which are expensive to uh, less expensive to build and launch. So at present, uh, they tend to be a special purpose uh, imaging platform rather than a general purposes like a global imager. So when aircraft are used to carrying an Im imaging sensors, a number of uh, benefits are immediately apparent, including the ability to sometimes to choose the imaging wavelength uh, which best matches the application of interest. Secondly, uh, the ability to achieve uh, high spatial resolution and uh, thirdly, 
the control uh, given over the region to be uh, imaged and how frequently imaging uh, should take place. So on the negative side, uh, they can be of uh, unstable imaging platform because uh, they fly through an atmosphere which is turbulent to some extent or other and the atmospheric column through which the images are recorded is often small and the image recorded are tent, uh, intended for a small group of users who often uh, pay a fee for the services and in general this is an expensive imaging uh, modality if satellite imaging was uh, an acceptable alternative for a uh, given applications and however since the atmospheric column is generally small the distortion and the brightness and the contrast uh, tend uh, not to be uh, as significant as with satellites or the other satellite missions are expensive to launch uh, and to maintain they have an economic benefits in that the imagery is available to a large number of users so for the aircraft missions the end users uh, generally has to pay for the full mission cost so the aircraft imaging is an expensive option if the satellite based imagery is a viable alternative so we still have uh, much to learn about the users of uh, the uses of an unpowerful uh, vehicle such as uh, drones uh, for serious remote sensing purposes so the use of drone platforms is uh, relatively a new means for recording and images of the landscape so the play so that is expensive uh, is limited at this time and uh, often uh, they can be one stable uh, imaging platform because at uh, atmosphere and their own uh, flight characteristics so the altitude uh, the latitude control is particularly important consideration and this particular uh, set of images uh, recorded or intended for only a small very small group of users who often own the platform and configures its uh, imaging uh, devices to meet a particular needs and uh, it provides very high spatial resolution in the recorded image uh, as possible and uh, when linked it with an onboard gns uh, receiver the usa specific flight path can be programmed for example, the drone can be programmed to check the farming uh, or the municipal assets like power lines on a regular basis. And the platform and their sensors can be very inexpensive. So for the drone platforms, uh, the privacy is an important consideration because of their uh, proximity to others, particularly in uh, urban regions because of the low flying altitudes. So uh, we now uh, need to understand a bit more about uh, the orbital characteristics of the satellites uh, when used as a uh, remote sensing imaging platforms. Of a particular importance is uh, how we can arrange a satellite in orbit so that uh, it can be used to image all of Earth's surface in a particular uh, time frame and do so uh, repetitively. So first, uh, without going into the, the details of the orbital mechanics, it is uh, sufficient to notice that most remote sensing satellite, uh, satellites orbit quite closer to the Earth's surface, typically between 600 to 900 kilometers, and uh, that is referred to as uh, low Earth or the LEO orbit. In uh, such an orbit, the satellite takes uh, about uh, 90 minutes to do one complete uh, revolution uh, about the Earth. So uh, here is the neat trick, which is the fundamental to almost all operational remote sensing missions. So the orbits are arranged uh, to, to be almost uh, polar, that is uh, near polar, uh, such that the orbit appears to, as such the Earth is uh, rotating eastwards underneath the satellite. And on uh, each adjacent uh, orbit, the satellite is uh, traveling over a different portion of the Earth's surface. The orbital inclination is arranged uh, so that it is uh, possible to have uh, adjoining strips of uh, images uh, on each orbital path also the on each path say uh, over the equator the satellite sees the local uh, same local or sun time and such an or orbit is called a sun synchronous if the orbit crosses uh, over the equator during the daytime traveling from uh, north to south that crossing uh, is called as a descending node a descending node of about uh, a bit morning a bit morning is chosen for the most program so that uh, there is also a sufficient shadowing to uh, make the topographic detail uh, visible the sensor uh, carry image uh, directly underneath uh, the underneath the satellite so that uh, the forward motion of platform uh, allows a strip or uh, imageries uh, to be recorded in order to achieve a global uh, imaging 
The orbits are arranged to repeat over several days uh, giving a complete Earth coverage and this is called as a repeat cycle. So some common examples of repeat cycles are for example the Lancet 7 has uh, 16 days and Terra has uh, uh, 16 days of repeat cycle and uh, 26 days for Pleiades. So for example uh, the Lancet 7 uh, records all the Earth's surface in 16 days and uh, does so repetitively. And this light uh, shows us a sun synchronous orbit in little more detail. This time for each satellite in, uh, in an ascending node configuration. As seen the first orbit uh, comes up over the Indian Ocean. So the next uh, the second over the Central Africa. So the sun synchronous orbit crosses the equator approximately the same local time each day. And this allows in a consistent scientific observation uh, with the uh, an angle between the sun and the earth's surface uh, remaining relatively constant. This illustration shows that three, uh, three consecutive orbits of the sun synchronous satellite and the, and the satellite's uh, most recent orbit is indicated by their dark red line while the older orbits are uh, in lighter reds. So you can able to visualize it from here. So first, uh, the first orbit uh, in the ascending node, the sa satellite crosses an equator and traveling towards north uh, northwards so it crosses the uh, indian ocean and the next orbit it uh, meets at uh, central africa and uh, the third uh, it uh, and the third is uh, over the atlantic ocean so the first orbit is in uh, indian ocean and the second orbit it is in over the central uh, africa and the third orbit it's over the atlantic uh, ocean just uh, off the african coast and uh, note that it is not the orbit of the, the satellite itself that moves, but the rotation of the Earth underneath the orbit. So the key points to be covered is the Earth imaging can be carried out using uh, drones, aircraft and satellite as an imaging platform to view the Earths from the above. And satellite allows the greatest field of view where the aircraft and drones tend to give uh, best spatial resolution. The most general purpose remote sensing satellites are placed in sun synchronous orbit and uh, in the sun synchronous orbit the satellite crosses the equator the same local time on each orbit. The point in an orbit where the equator is crossed during the day is called node and ascending if the travels from uh, north to south. The most remote sensing satellite have a mid morning descending node in order to f allow a sufficient shadowing to reveal a geomorphological features. So the remote sensing satellites tends to be uh, an, at an altitude little under a thousand kilometers and takes about 90 minutes to orbit the earth. So in this video I have shown you what are the platforms are used for imaging the earth's surface. And we have seen uh, three different platforms. One is a satellite, aircraft and drone platforms. So if you like this video please uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.